to the deacons, church council chair, and members of the New Mission Baptist Church and Christian Center. To God be all the glory for the things that he has done. Amen. Four years ago, I was led by the Spirit to call Dr. Walter O. Whitfield. I had not talked to him in several years, and I was concerned about him because of the decline of his health. At this time, I happened to be a freshman at Benedict College sitting on my bed in my dorm room. We began our conversation by catching up with each other, and later he asked me to come and minister on that coming Sunday. It happened to be you Sunday. After that Sunday, he asked me to return the following month and needless to say, as God would have it, I have been here ever since. Amen. Amen. That simple conversation over the phone helped to spark what I like to call a spiritual revolution in New Mission Baptist Church in Christian Center. As I have reminisced over the past few weeks, I can un undeniably say that God has done some amazing things. Yes. His grace brought us to a place in him that seemed like a small beam in our eyes. Many of us never imagined new mission to be as far as along as we are right now. And for that, I have to give God all praise. Amen. I give him praise for aiding us in our ministry endeavors because his help and his favor has allowed us to accomplish so many things in a four-year span. Administratively, we joined together and paid off this edifice. We installed all church leaders. They are now operating. We added teachers to the children's church ministry. And we established a church council to help with the governance of this church. Spiritually, we were able to put the spirit back in the church. We began to see a great harvest of fruit produced in our lives because of many in-depth studies in God's word. Lastly, we were able to make nominal contributions as well. We increased attendance at Sunday morning worship, children's church, and overall membership. This was all done by the hand of God. Amen. And in the words of Reverend James Allen, this is the Lord's doing. Amen. And it was marvelous in our lives. <laughs> New Mission, the Lord has truly been on our side, and his hand of mercy and grace has been evident in this ministry. And I truly believe that eyes have not seen nor ears heard what God has in store for this ministry. Because of this belief, my emotions are very high. And I stand here with bitter, sweet feelings. I choose to rejoice because I have seen God move this ministry into higher heights and deeper depths in Him. Conversely, I am somewhat burdened because just like the Apostle Paul, the time of my departure is at hand. Yes, new mission, it is time for separation. Over the past few weeks, God has reminded me that it was him who anointed me before the world began. It was also God that placed this unsettling call to pastor in my heart. Therefore, I must move on now and walk in that anointing in a place apart from New Mission Baptist Church and Christian Center. This decision is one that I have wrestled with for months. In all fairness and honesty, God himself told me that I would not be the next pastor of New Mission. For he had another place where I must serve. So after months of intensive and extensive prayer and consultation with community leaders, pastors, members of this church, family and friends, I have answered God's call. Therefore today was my last Sunday standing in this place behind this sacred desk to minister at New Mission Baptist Church and Christian Center. And I would also like to withdraw my name from the pastoral search. 
Now I know that this is shocking news, and in the coming weeks, this transition will have a great effect on this ministry. However, at some point in all of our lives, we must submit to the will and the way of Almighty God. And I know that many of you want nothing more than for me to be in the will of God. No mission, we must part ways if we intend and expect God to receive all glory in our lives. But please know that our connection and spiritual strides did not happen by coincidence. And it will not be destroyed because of a separation. But just like Abraham's family was blessed by his move, so shall we all. Hear the words recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred and from thy father's house, into a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. <coughs> Abraham's blessing and the future children of Israel's blessing was contingent upon Abraham's willingness to move. And I am strong enough in my faith to believe that my decision to follow God and move will release a supernatural blessing upon the lives of all who frequent this ministry. While I love you all, there are a few special people I would like to speak to in this moment. First things first, let me thank the deacons of this ministry, as well as the ministers, for sharing your pastor with me. I am forever grateful for the opportunities that Dr. Whitfield provided for me since I was 13 years old. And I will never forget his methods and his teachings. Although he and I did not see eye to eye on everything, I still hold fast to many of his teachings, and I plan to use these in my next assignment. Tamika, thank you for always being in my corner and fighting the battle of faith with blood, sweat, and tears. Please know that your labor was not in vain and that dad would be immensely proud to know that you fought long, hard, and strong for me and the spiritual welfare of this ministry. Ms. Willie May, Aunt BJ, Mr. and Ms. Earl Richmond, Mr. and Mrs. Hurst, and so many others, thank you for secretly giving me monetary gifts to lighten the load of ministry and the burden of my travel. Please know that God has a special blessing with your name on it. For the Bible says, when thou doest thy alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thy alms may be in secret, and your Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Shantae, thank you for allowing the Spirit to rule and reign in your heart. There were times when you prayed so strong that I had no other choice but to lift my head from a hung state. And even though Mother Todd is not here today, I thank her for praying in the spirit when the present evil sought to distract me from God's will. Andre, thank you for being just a friend. And someone who was always willing hang out and to listen when I had to rain. Isaac, thank you for always trusting my spiritual guidance. I will continue to pray for you and your collegiate and athletic career. DJ was made known today for I told him, however, it's been too much for him to take in. But please let him know that I know that this has been a hard road since his grandfather's death. But he needs to know that God is near and nothing happens without God's permission. 
Nothing happens without God allowing you to. And your mission is going to be just fine. Jordan, this has been the hardest for me to say. Thank you for being my understudy and trusting that I would never lead you astray. Instead, you always trusted that I would stand flat-footed and preach and teach the Word of God. Her admiration of me would never be overlooked or forgotten. And I promise to keep my word to you and your grandfather. With every fiber of my being, I will see to it that one day you become an even greater preacher than I am. There are too many names to call in this small time frame. But I cannot close without thanking all of you, especially the McQueens, Aunt Lisa, and Sister Jackie Melvin. You always saw the call that was upon my life. And you always considered me your pastor, although it was never official. As I hasten to a close in this resignation, please allow me to leave you with a word of wisdom. During times of transition, People have the tendency to grow bitter because of what could or should have happened. I have ridden in this rodeo several times. Please, New Mission, do not become a church that's absent of love. Instead, let brotherly love continue. In due time, God will send a pastor and a leader to this house. No matter who that man is, honor them, respect them, uphold their hands in battle, and most of all, support the vision that they have for this ministry. You need a pastor. A shepherd over the flock, not another preacher. You need a pastor. When the Lord sends you that pastor after his heart, please allow him the opportunity to feed you with knowledge, truth, and understanding. Again, I thank you all for this opportunity. And I love each and every one of you. God bless each of you. And I bid you all Godspeed.